we're live. Yo! Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Breeze Shooters Podcast. We are the show that brings you news, sports, poker, and everything in between. You were saying something? We love the tweeners. Can't be interrupting me, Chris. Did you when when I drop the motherfucking... No, no, I know, but you did. Did you finish the? Did you did you fix the motherfucking? Did you tweak what you needed to tweak? Because I, you know, I, 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 I I'm, 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 I feel bad. Do I watch your now? Now with Frisco, which I'm gonna let him know. But you think I watch your now because of, of you know your technical difficulties and shit. Listen. Hey, first off, okay. I got to say... When he's, when he's here, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> apologize. I, just for the listeners so they know, Frisco is a true professional, a gentleman, never got mad, knowing, but he got a taste of my world of what I got to deal with. I got to deal with you. Who the hell just clocks out? What? You, you, you You took a 40-minute break and you never came back. Nah. Can I say nah, so, now, now we just make, now, now we're just making up stories. And you know, I, I'm not that. I'm, I'm not about that life. My, my life is about facts. So, so let's start know, over I, again. I, I, I told you. Let, let, let's start over. Let's start over. Let, let, let's let's do it right this time. Let's let's do it right, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm your host Lou, joined by my uh, very good friend Chris. What's up, yes, Papa? sir? Once again, there's a fucking delay. I'll I'll, I'll okay. be mindful of it. It's okay. Not now that you mentioned it to the world, but it's fine. We'll work through it. Edit Ladies out, and gentlemen, edit, edit, edit it out, edit it out, edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to announce our special guest today. We have the talented professional, Mr. Frisco Cosme. Um, Cosme, 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 Cosme. He's a singer, actor, and choreographer. Frisco has traveled the world following his dream of being an entertainer. In 2001, to, uh, 2001, Frisco choreographed the British Virgin Islands Miss World pageant. He has performed in front of thousands during his singing and dance career. He's worked on both TV and movies. He's worked on films such as Fighting with Terrence Howard and Channing Tatum. He has recently uh, worked on CBS TV show Persons of Interest and 50 Cent's hit TV show For Life. Frisco has worked on hit shows, including the highly anticipated film In the Heights, which we'll get into, uh, by Lynn Manuel Miranda, who is a Pulitzer Prize winner, along other uh, um, awards. So, yo, what's that? What's that face, Bubble? You all right? No, no, because no, I'm just waiting to jump in because I got I got a lot of shit to say. But go ahead, go ahead. But I'm, maybe I'm today, gonna, maybe today's not the day. Let, 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 let's the no. talented Frisco okay. talk. <laughs> All right. All right. I I, I don't want to fuck this up again. So I just want, you know, for the very patient, you forgot to put in his, his intro, the very patient Frisco Cosme. I, I have to say his name properly because it, oh shit, little Louis behind you? Yeah, always. I always I, I always roll with guys. Let me bring in Frisco. Uh, Hold on, brother. You got, you got the backup? You got the backup? All right. Yeah. Frisco! Frisco, what's up, brother? What's up, fellas? How y'all doing, man? Good, I'm good. sitting How's... here laughing my ass off backstage. I'm like, yo, y'all crazy knuckleheads, bro. I tell you. <laughs> you're like my cousin. Oh, my <laughs> God. I said it's Spanish because I'm like, talk real fast and no me entiende. So we good. I know you understand me, but si yo hablo bien rápido, no me entiende. Por eso yo hablo rápido. He doesn't, but I, perdónanos nuestra, nuestra technical difficulties last week. Nah, Ooh. man, you good, bro. It's, that's what the world is about now. You know, all this virtual shit. So we got to, exactly. we got to roll with the punches, right? Yeah, man. That's what yeah, makes yeah, it yeah, too yeah, professional, yeah. man. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much for 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 being uh, a, a true gentleman and a true professional as you are, as Lou as Lou stated. Nah, no problem, man. No problem at all. Now, now I'll shut the hell up and I'll let Lou conduct the interview because you know this is this is the way. Yeah, I had to. I get. I have. I'm working on my Zen, so sometimes I gotta get shit out. So now I I got it out, and now and now we continue with with, with this awesome interview. 
Frisco don't mind Chris. He just came nah, back from man. the parade. He's still a little charged. I'm telling you, it's like, you know, it's because of the territory that us Latinos are like that, bro. We just like yeah. we get all this energy. Like, you gotta let it out. Right? I'm like a puppy. You gotta let it out. Right? I went for my walk. Now I'm good. Now I'm caught you. Now we good. <laughs> so so Frisco, brother, come on. Let's um let's start from the beginning, man. How do you yeah, get into up? the life of entertainment, of dancing and all that good stuff? Uh where did it all start? Well, it all started for me when probably by the age, uh, like the age of five years old. Um, you know, when I first saw the movie Fame, um, the original movie, something inside clicked, man. Something I knew right then and there that that's what I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to, I saw that it was like a form of expression. You could just, you know, let it all out through music, through dancing, through singing. And it just, it, something clicked, man. I don't even know, I don't even know how to express it other than something clicked. Like I knew at five years old when I saw that movie that that's what I wanted to do. And then, you know, my moms used to have like parties and stuff or just like some gatherings with her friends. And, you know, back back then it was like the 70s. So, you know, the hustle was out and, you know, there I am watching and just watching and just watching people's feed. And I picked up the footwork at a really early age, like five, six years old. I started looking at the hand movements. I saw the way they started doing the spins. I couldn't do the spins. There was no young little girl my height to do the spins. But I, I was able to do the, the footwork and the handwork without a partner. And they, they were impressed. My mom was like, oh, something's going on here. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, then she put me into dance class, bro. And from there it took off, took off. I just never stopped dancing, you know, and mm. one thing led to another. Nice. Started that. So, so then, um, so you got this early bug. So what did your parents do to kind of like reinforce that um, that love or that passion that you were showing for this uh, particular thing? Were they putting you like in formal like dance classes and things of that nature, like hip hop classes and stuff? Well, back then there weren't any hip hop classes. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. So, you know, I had to deal with the summer, with summer camps and, you know, in summer camp you had the karate you had karate class and then you had the dance class. So I used to always not go to karate and just do dance, you know, and because it was just something I wanted to do. So they used to send me, my moms used to send me to um, summer programs, you know, like, and it's not to, not to go away, you know, it's just the summer day camps and stuff. So um, I used to go to the one on Bronx Community College back in, you know, back in the eighties, you know, the, the, the summer camp. So, you know, they had, so I just kept on going and going. So they just encouraged me to follow my heart. They always told me stay in school, you know, but, you know, always, always follow your heart. You know, my mom, you know, as time went by, um, you know, once I, then I went to junior high school and in junior high school, we had a dance department and I joined the dance department as well. And I was like one of like maybe four guys in the dance department, everything else was women, you know, they were all girls. So, um, you know, of course, the bullying was there. I, I, I dealt with a lot of bullying when I was a kid. You know, um, I survived. You know, it's survivable. There's no, and I'm not just talking about name calling. I'm talking about physical. Like, I, I got jumped. You know, there, it, I mean, I, I went through it as, as a teenage kid, as a young kid, and then as a teenager, you know, so I get it, you know. Um, but I just continued. That's not going to stop me. I, I have a burning passion. You know, I have something that, nothing can can turn it off you're not you're not lying man you we we come from an era where there was no anti-bullying it was like you it was something you had to deal with you had yeah. to map out your routes home you absolutely. had to look out the window see who's outside but absolutely I, absolutely so like, it was pretty difficult but i managed you know i walk with god you know i'm a really you know my mom is very comes from a very strong spiritual background so you know i'm you know, I can't do anything without God. He's my sufficiency. So Amen. he he actually guides my path. He tells me where to go. I don't know where to go. He's he's taking me where I'm where I'm at today. I hear that. Because man. this is his plan, not mine. I hear amen, that. Amen, amen, amen. I think so, he let, I, he, he, I think he let me wander by myself. But I'm, I'm back. I'm back. He, he took me on this <laughs> way. You say wander. I say he closed the door. <laughs> we're, we're full up here. You know, he said, "Yo, we're closed. Come back later." 
<laughs> so I'm back uh, on the right path. That's the most important thing. I'm back on the right path. Right, right, right. <laughs> so Frisco, were you doing like talent shows and things of that nature before oh, yeah. you got to high school? Yeah, so so in junior high school, you know, the dance department, of course, throughout the whole year, the, you know, the dance teachers teaching you routines and, you know, just doing stuff for the school assemblies. So I used to do a lot of school assemblies. And, you know, as being the only boy and being a good dancer, you know, I had all the little all the little girls coming after me and the boys didn't like that, bro. And that was, you know, that that's what made me the target. You know, I was literally the target in school because all the girls were, you know, were yeah, they were to me, you know, they were oh, like, yeah, I was the dancer. Everybody was like, oh my God. And so, you know, so um, I did all the talent shows there. And then um, in junior high school, I actually got the opportunity to audition for the High School of Performing Arts. Wow. So at 14 years old, I um, auditioned, you know, I was um, in eighth grade at 14 years old. Um, and I auditioned for high school performing arts, singing, dancing, acting. I got accepted for all three, but only could pick one as a major. So of course I went with dance, you know, cause I consider myself a dancer who sings and acts, not a that's singer who acts and dances and vice versa. You know, my strongest- That's your passion too. The dancing is, that's, that's your first love and your only love, so. Uh, yeah, that's my passion. That's like, you know, that's, it just burns, I mean, it. And I, and for me, it's more of a, of a therapeutic thing. You know, you, it's a form of therapy. You know, you can express what you feel through dance, whether you're a good dancer or a regular, we're all dancers, bro. If you can dance to music, if you can bop to it, even if, you know, some are better than others, but we're all the same, man. We just have, you know, some are more skilled, but nonetheless, it's a form of expression. So for me, it's really important, you know, as a part of my life, you know, that's the only way I can express myself truly is through my dance. First of all, I wouldn't say we're all dancers. I know somebody that just moves <laughs> tables. He it. moves chairs. He, redir he, right, he redirects the traffic for nothing. <laughs> and all he's doing is just dragging his feet. He calls himself the Gallo. No. But I, I, no, the no, guy's no. never made a move. No, you never, guys. Never made a move. No, you guys gave me the nickname. I never I never got the, I never put my name as a Gallo. You guys gave me the nickname. And, and ever since I cleared the tape, you know, I go to, I got to lose house quite often. You know, he's he's a brother of mine, and I noticed that for the last few years, when 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 I first started going to his house years ago, uh, Chris, come on, do the moves, and I would do my moves. I would like, boom, boom, boom. I don't but know lately, about that. you know, <laughs> hardwood hardwood floors. He he doesn't want me to scuff up the hardwood floor, so I know, I know that's the reason why. <laughs> if we in the backyard. Go ahead, Chris, go ahead, do what you want. No, Go all out, but not in the house. So I, I, I realized that, so I started thinking, I said, yo, am I losing it? Like, I, I, on my moves, like, I got to update my moves? You got to, you know, you got to keep it, you got to keep it up to date, bro. You can't, yeah. uh, to me, it's you know. all about, Frisco, to me, it's all about confidence, man. So I, I go out there, and I be throwing some moves, and then when I get home, my back is hurting, my legs are hurting, but I don't care, because I look good in the moment. So in the moment, in but, the and then house. you suffer the consequences later, I said, right? I said, listen, I, I saw a sacrifice. Well, and I said, we were in a loose house. Uh, 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 his brother-in-law like challenged me to like uh, what was what's it? His freestyle, like freestyle. freestyle. And it, it, didn't, we'll go, it didn't go well for me. Like I was out of commission for like four days after that. I didn't tell no. That's the first time I'm telling this happened. Like like six, seven weeks ago, I was like uh -oh. I was out of commission. So it recently happened. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was when we started getting comfortable and enough to, 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 to interact, you know, with, with all this COVID shit. Right, right, right. We had a little, a, a small get together in his house, and 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 it, it, it I should have stayed home because I'm telling you, the last then four days I was like a vegetable. I couldn't do nothing. It, going to the bathroom was a problem. But you know what, Chris, <laughs> you on. do, you you do bring us to a good transition point, freestyle. <laughs> Frisco was big in the freestyle world. Wow. Why, don't, why don't you tell us how you got started um, and who were some of the, the big acts you were working with during that time? Absolutely. So freestyle is a really important part of my life as well. Um, when I was about uh, 14, I auditioned for Judy Torres. So around wow. the same time I was auditioning for... Um, the High School of Performing Arts. 
I auditioned for Judy Torres. She was the first freestyle artist that I ever danced with. Um, I was actually her youngest dancer. She didn't know that because I lied on the application and said I was 16 because they weren't going to allow me to audition if I said anything different. Okay, Frisco, we did the same thing for Little League. I was like that Dominican kid. And I was actually like 18. I said I was 14. I was hitting bombs. You see? That's what it is. So you know exactly <laughs> Whatever what Whatever it is to, to get what you need to get to. So don't worry about it. Ain't nobody judging yeah. right now. No, but yeah, Frisco, so, situ Frisco situation is different. He's going into clubs, you know. He's a young correct. guy. Yeah, yeah. Listen, whatever. <laughs> go ahead, yeah. go ahead, <laughs> go ahead, Bob. So, um, so at 14 years old, I auditioned for her, and I actually got the spot. So I was crazy excited. And back then, Judy Torres was like the, you know, she was like on top, on top of her game. Super big time, super big time. Freestyle. Yeah, like Judy Torres is Judy Torres, right? So, um. I started traveling with Judy Torres, you know, um, on her tour. This was when she was actually, um, when she actually released her, her Love Story album. Um, so I started traveling with her. And of course, in the process, I started meeting, that's when I started meeting George Lamont. I started meeting uh, Rihanna Page, uh, the Rio sisters. I mean, the list goes, I mean, you know, all of those. Then I met Cynthia, Coro, I mean, Noel, Suave, Exo, I mean, as yeah, you know, all the, cream, all, every, all the cream of the crop, all the all the prime, yeah. and then, um, I started working with different artists. Then I started uh, after traveling with Judy. You know, I of course got accepted to the high school performing arts, so I was going to school in the summer. We were traveling, so um, during high school, every time we had a performance, I would I met Cynthia right again. And she was always like, oh, my God, you know, you're great and you're awesome and this and that. So at one of our performances, uh, Judy's performances, a producer came up to me or someone who does music and, and um, uh, maybe a manager or somebody. And he asked me, you know, because of my look at the time, he was like, yo, are you, can you sing? And I said, yeah, you know, I can sing. So um he says, I, I think I want to hook you up with, uh, with a producer. You know, uh, she's looking to form a, a guy group. And at this point, I was already like maybe 17, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, okay, you know, and freestyle was big and the group thing was big. There wasn't really, you know, you had Loose Touch and you had all these other groups. So I'm like, all right, you know, fuck it. Maybe I could be one of the guys. Well, the ne next groups, you know, that, that come out in the freestyle. So... Um, I met Peggy Sanders, which is actually the uh, the woman who put together the group Pajama Party. Oh, wow. And Pajama Party, as you know, was pretty successful. So um, I met her. She loved me. She loved my look. She loved my sound. So she was like, yes, I'm putting these three guys together. I'd like you to be part of it. So I tried the boy thing, the boy group thing, you know, for, for a couple of years. Nothing really happened with that, you know, like it was like a, a Filipino, me, Hispanic, and then they had an Italian guy. So they wanted like this group of different races and stuff. It didn't work out, you know, so they dropped out. I stood working with her, just recording, you know, just recording stuff. And then she asked me if I can find, because I was still performing in the clubs with, with the freestyle artists. So she said, when you're performing, if you meet somebody, a guy who's a vocalist, you know, and he sounds good give them my information to see if we can put at least a duo group together. So I actually found somebody who was pretty great at the time, you know? Um, so I called, um, I called her. I said, I think I found them. Here's his information. So we formed it and we actually were going to be the first duo group um, on MCA records, Hispanic duo group. Uh, our name was double devotion. Um, that didn't work out. So then I just started, you know, I kept on choreographing. I started doing a lot of shows, you know. Um, and then um, I started dancing for Naomi, right? And so I was with Naomi for a really long time. Her and I became really good friends. And then um, she had um, everybody, because I've been around for so many years, every time I started dancing with another artist, it spread 
oh my God, Coral's dancer, Cynthia's dancer, whatever's dancer is now dancing for this person, you know? So it was that thing. And back then, they 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 liked to share each other's dancer, which kind of took away from the authenticity of their show, right? Because if, let's say, you know, Big Lou is rapping and you, Chris, you're, 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 um, you're rapping as well. He's got dancers. You see, dancers aren't really exclusive to a certain artist unless they get some, you know, unless they sign something exclusive with that artist. So they were using each other's dancers. Yeah, because every, everybody needs to eat. So the dancers would, whatever, the, wherever, wherever the money was coming from, they, that's where they would go. Correct. Especially if you're not, if you didn't sign anything, you that's didn't sign exclusivity. You know what I'm saying? So first of all, can I jump in for a second? Yeah. What was the, what was the problem? It w was it that it was the same dancer being used for the groups or was it that the dancer was doing the same moves for the, for each different group? Oh no, it was, oh. no, it was more, it was more that the dancers were being used from a different artist. Gotcha. It's not the routine. The routines are different, gotcha. you know, unless, that unless your dancers Lou choreograph your show, right? Then down the line, you then Chris hires them when you don't have a show to do a show, and they choreograph Chris's show and they use your Same dancers. dancers. Then yeah. that's a problem. Okay, but gotcha. that really wasn't the issue back then. Back then it was that they were using the dancers. Oh, the same dancers. Right, the yeah. same dancers. Now that became a problem because when we all had a show at the same venue, it took away, although the dancers' faces were getting exposed and they're like, oh my God, those dancers are dancing with everybody. The artist didn't feel so authentic because the show wasn't authentic. Like they didn't have dancers that the other ones didn't have. You know what I'm saying? And you want so them they, to stand out. Yeah. You you, this, this is I my mean, show, I don't, these are my dancers. And so you lose, like, you're not original. Correct. So that was that was a big thing. Now, unless I signed with, unless you ask me, yo, sign with me, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to go here and there, right? So one day I had a show with Coro in um, Florida, a big, at, at the Orange Bowl, it was a big event. I, and that was around the time that Janet Jackson's If came out. And I learned that routine like, like if I choreographed it, I promise you. Yeah. Right. So I said, um, so I was showing one of the dancers backstage the routine of Janet Jackson and Cynthia was watching me from the other side. So then Cynthia comes to me and says, listen, I know you dance for Coro, but can you choreograph for me? And I said, this is Thief of Hearts. This is Change on Me, Cynthia. This is another queen, who, you know, the princess of freestyle. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay. So I said, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I don't know if Coral's going to get upset because they had a history of using the same dancers. Okay. Uh, okay. So she didn't want to go through that again. So I said, listen, don't worry about it. I'm a choreographer. I'm a dancer. If I don't have a show with Coral, I'm gonna go with you, so it doesn't matter unless Coral tells me don't do, don't do this. You know, I'm gonna tell him give me give me a contract. There you give me a salary, give me something that's gonna stop that's gonna make up for not making extra money. And money. You know, I'm yeah. a businessman. I mean, I learned at a very early age being in this business. I listen a lot, you know, and I listen to a lot of seasoned dancers, and I learned along the way. So, um, boom. I ended up working for Cynthia and dancing for Cynthia and dancing for Coro, right? Mm -hmm. And Naomi, all at the same time. Then all of it, a friend of mine was dancing for Karina. He actually asked me to help him with some choreography for Karina because Karina gave him a couple of songs to have done by a certain time. And he felt he wasn't going to finish on time, all three of them. So he would work on one and I would work on the other, right? Mm -hmm. So he goes, yo, come over, come over to the crib. I got to have this done because I'm yo and I don't I like my brain. I'm overwhelmed. I said, okay. I went and I showed him. I mean, I went and I said, okay, I got to his crib. He was like, okay, let's, let's, let's do temptation, bro. Let's do, let's, let's do something for temptation. 
So I told him, yo, just play. And I, I already knew Temptation. So I said, just play the song for me. So he played it for me. And um, I'm listening to it. And I always start with the, in my brain, I always start the, rut the routines in the break. And I work myself backwards and then I finish it. Really? Yeah, it's really interesting. I'm, I'm, it's really, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely interesting. Yeah, you know why? I'll tell you why I do that. But that's how I, I always start at the break and then I go to the beginning of the song and then I finish it in choreography, right? Yeah, cool. So that when it blends together, it's a buildup. And oh, I'm gonna tell cool. you how. Um, so when he gave me Temptation and I listened to the break, I said, I got this. So I played it like three times in my brain and I got the entire routine in my brain. I started to show him the routine. Did the routine, rocked it in his house. Oh my God, do you mind coming to um, rehearsal tonight with me, with Karina, you know, to Karina's rehearsal? I was like, sure. So I went with him to the rehearsal. Karina wasn't there yet. And um, I'm there and I'm watching him. You know, at this point he was, choreographing another song, not Temptation. So then all of a sudden, Karina walks in, right? And I'm a, I was a huge, I'm, I'm a huge Karina fan. Like mm. from the door, from the very first track, Out of Control, right? So here she comes in and her presence alone was just like, it, it was almost breathtaking, right? But I didn't want to show it. I mean, now, mind you, I'm, I'm here. I'm like 19, 20 years old. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, my God, that's Karina. And I'm just sitting like this. And Karina looks to the side. She sees me. And she looks at the guy, my friend. And she says, is he here with you? And, she sa and he said, yeah. She says, come outside. I, he's, I a don't trouble know. Now. he's a trouble I don't know now. What that was about? <laughs> Frisco getting guys in trouble, <laughs> man. I was like, and all of a sudden, he comes back in. She comes in after him. She looks at me. She says hello, and she walks to the back of the studio. Right, and I'm just mm -hmm. sitting there now. I'm nervous because she took him out after he told her that I was with him. So it, I, for me, I knew it was something about me, only to learn that she said to him later on from him, I learned that she told him, isn't that Naomi's dancer, Frisco? Uh, and she, he was like, yeah. And she, uh, she told him, why are you bringing him here? You know how private I am about my projects. Oh, wow. Which makes sense. Right, because she don't know what I'm there for. And if mm -hmm. I'm looking at her project, I could run back and tell Naomi whatever. And you know, so this yeah. is and, and it's understandable as an artist. I don't I get it. So I was like, oh my God. So she told him, um, isn't he Naomi's dancer? And um, and she, he was like, Yeah, I asked him to help me with some choreography, you know. Um and I believe she told him, um, okay, well, you know, next time give me a give me a heads up but just remember that I'm really private about my stuff. So I pray that what we do here stays here, right? Mm. So he was, but that was after we left the rehearsal, but in the rehearsal, let me get back to the rehearsal. So in the rehearsal, he, um, he does his thing, he finishes. So now she wants to see Temptation. Which is, which is the one you were working on. Right, which is the one I quoted, right? I, 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 before I'm sorry to interrupt you, but when she told you to, uh, um, and, and please don't lose your train of thought, is that I, I, I think I, I maybe I got lost. When she told you to go outside, no, not me. She told my she told friend, them. okay, and who I she came went, with, who was choreographing for okay. her. She didn't talk to you. She just talked to him. Yeah, she said she pointed to me and she said, and then she looked at the choreographer and she said, "Is he here with you?" Okay. And the choreographer said, "Yeah, he's here with me." And, and she said, "I need." Come outside with me to the choreographer. So she never directed. She never directed an address. Just up to, to you. Okay, 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 okay. I'm back on track. I just first call. I apologize. And I'm going for this. So I said, okay, let me see. I want to. No, 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 no. First call. He's no, almost pushing sixty, so you know he's a little slow. So just, just... <laughs> nah, it's okay. Go no, ahead, Frisco. No. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> so the temptation so she so temptation comes on. So right. So now she wants to see temptation because of course that's the that's the hit. That's the one that's gonna do everything for the show that she has planned, X, Y, and Z, right? So my friend then turns around and says, um, Frisco, can you um no, he says, she goes, okay, let me see Temptation. And right there, he turns to her and says, okay, Frisco and I worked on this, right? Frisco and I worked on this. Um, and I kind of like looked at him and then I looked back at Karina and he said, and he'll show you because I just finished rehearsal and I'm a little tired, so let him show you. But he was full of shit. Cause it was uh, you who who, oh, who worked but, on it. Wow. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I play on. I put on the break. She says, "I just want to see the break." Yeah, don't worry yeah. about it. Go ahead. <laughs> You're good. Yeah, she just wants to see the break. That's one of the main reasons why I always start with the break. Oh, so that way they know you could. Nobody really knows the set except you. If you're starting for the break, they don't know how it begins or how it finishes. That's one. And so another that reason why I always start with a break is because usually the break is the climax of the track. Got you. And the artist wants to see that choreography. Got you. Got right? you. And because that is the climax of the song, I work backwards because now it helps me go backwards and say how we're going to start the story to mm -hmm. lead me up to that impact. Got gotcha. you. Right? So behind, behind my choreography, there's always a story. You know, people, when they, they, they you have choreographers who will just choreograph steps and just put them together. Mine has a story behind it. You know, so whatever the artist is singing, you're gonna see that through the dance. That you understand? Sense, so, yeah. um, so I did the routine and, um, you know, the break. And as soon as the break finished that I stopped the track, Karina just looks at me and looks at Matt, at the, at, at the guy, and says, um, that's exactly what I was looking for. Wow. Now, when she said that, I looked at her and I said, and by the way, I choreographed this, not Matt, not the gentleman. Wow. And he's, First right goal. There, and he's standing right there. Wow. And she looks at him and she says, and he smiles and he goes, oh, well, everything he does, I do. So it's like we both did it. <laughs> so we brushed it off. <laughs> and, that, and that's where Dancing with the Stars had um, started. <laughs> and so um, that was the end of that. I was like, okay, you know, I brushed it off. He's like my brother. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I guess, you know, everything we do, we do together. That's cool. And that's not a problem. So... At the end of the rehearsal, Karina, when I said, uh, she goes, can I speak to you after the rehearsal? And I said, absolutely. And then so we got outside and um, she was like, you're absolutely amazing. And I can see why everybody hires you. Mm -hmm. She says, would you like to be my choreographer? I'd like to hire you. But you already got four other acts going. Could you yeah, handle but taking on the fifth one? Yeah, I took on my fifth act, but I'll tell you what. what she told her he, 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 she wants to hire him, so there could be some you know, exclusivity in, in the situation. There you go. Wow. Good catch. That's because what I that's do. exactly that's what, what happened. Frisco. Frisco, that's, that's exactly what, what happened. The moment Karina asked me if she can hire me, I said, absolutely. And guess what Frisco did? Frisco said goodbye to the rest. Yeah, what happened? Now, now I said contract. goodbye to the rest. I got you. What happened to Matt? <laughs> Matt, Matt took your other gigs. <laughs> so, no, he didn't. Hey, Matt, so Cynthia's Matt. looking for a dancer. He Matt actually, for, he I actually so stood Matt dancing. dancing in the, on the <laughs> he actually stood dancing with her, and oh, so he did a couple of shows. But eventually, he, he was no longer, and I stood with her. 
Uh, and um, we performed for many years after that. And Karina and I became the close, we, we became really close friends, really close friends. To the point that today I was I was asking her, I was talking to her and asking her about East Side Story. Oh, nice. So, so first go, all right. So, so that's, that's pretty much like your freestyle career, right? Right. How do you, how do you end up choreographing a, a beauty pageant in 2001? How did that so, come about? Okay. So my best friend um, who I met, who I knew in junior, um, since elementary school, uh, when I auditioned for um, performing arts, um, three other, uh, there was other kids who, who auditioned, but only three of us in the entire junior high school made it, which was my friend Charmaine, m myself, and uh, my friend Alex, who was who's an actor. So um, she always performs. She's a ballerina, so she travels a lot, and she's from the West Indies. And, she, and so they happened to be doing the Miss uh, the Miss British Virgin Islands World Pageant in Tartola, and um, and. She needed another dancer, another choreographer. So she called me and she was like, Frisco, you want to go to um, the British Virgin Islands? I said, what? <laughs> of course, she's going to say no to the British Virgin Islands. And I said, for what? She was like, yo, they need, chore they need two choreographers for, um, to, for the Miss World pageant. I said, let's go. When I packed my bag, so we left. And I got to meet a lot of like famous actors who were the guest judges for the pageant. And... That in itself was a major experience. It took me, like, it just broadened my whole dancing, my whole vision, you know. It took me away from the freestyles, you know, just that, because that was my main top, you know, thing. And then once I did that, that just broadened my whole horizon in the dance, and it made me want to just expand even more. And so that's where that came in. And so I was blessed with uh, being able to do the two thousand uh, the two thousand one Miss World pageant. It was it was extraordinary. Nice. So I, I got. Uh, sorry, Chris. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Jump in, Chris. My bad. Um, I got a question, Frisco. You started yeah. at this at a very, very, very early age. Mm -hmm. Um, and I meant to ask you this uh, uh, um, last time. Did you have? I hope this is not a stupid question. Did you ever get representation? Like, did you have somebody? You know, like looking agent. at looking at your manager, looking getting you gigs. Because I see that that in your in your in your freestyle era, you were you know you had to really hustle and grind. So my question to you, at you know at such an early age, and that producer manager that approached you, you didn't have no representation. No, it was no. all you all the time. Not it not was me by myself. Position. It was me by myself. Oh. I Wow. Chris, that's, Chris, that's actually an excellent question because that's in a time where they didn't have social media. So nobody really knew you unless they were at the clubs exactly. watching the performances. You know and I'm pretty hard, sure from there was word of mouth. It would be, it, it yeah. would be hard to, 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 to get gigs or jobs. Meanwhile, a 14-year-old is killing it and people are approaching him. That's why I ask them now because normally you have somebody shopping you around. Right. I, I wish. I got this kid. He's fire. And you did it by yourself. God bless, man. That's that's hustle. Thank you, man. Right there. I appreciate that. God, thank you, thank you oh, so much. Man. First, God first is, that's why I say that God is my sufficiency. He take, he took me. He led me. Come on, what fourteen year old is gonna go and do all of that? I didn't, I'm, you know, I didn't know any better. So yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, that that that's a great thing, catch. All praise to God, but 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 yeah, your work ethic had a lot to do with it, Frisco. Maybe, never, yeah. you never, you know. I, I always tell people. You know, I'm a God fearer man, and, and but God is there to help me with my decisions. My it decisions says, are my decisions. And it says in the Bible, God helps those who help themselves. Boom. There you I go. say that all the time. I don't read the Bible a lot, Frisco, but I, I know that one. I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But uh, but uh, no, I just wanted to ask you because I, I, like at a young age, and you like you you it's it's uncommon. Yeah. For a 14, 15, 16 year old to go through the business without representation. There's all, and you know what? You probably saved yourself a lot of headaches and a lot of freaking uh, 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 scam scammers trying to, okay, they'll make 70% and they'll give you 30 and stuff like that. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm spitballing numbers, but, but not God bless, man. I, that's, Thank that's you, bro. Crazy. Thank you that's, so much. That's, that's amazing, man. 
That's yeah, and and it's great that you asked me that. You know why? Because you're gonna be shocked now. Till this day, I still don't have representation. Stop. And everything I do, I do myself. I get my work. I go out there and I get my auditions. I go out there and I put myself on set. I'm the one that promotes myself. No I'm my manager, manager, no no company, no no, no manager, company. no agent, no 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 one. First of all, even I, acting. Huh? Even, even for the acting side. Even for the acting, my friend. Wow. And I'm gonna so tell you how I do it. Go ahead, share. Yes, and please this give is us good, the sauce because we need the sauce. For, huh? Give us, give us the secret, because if, if, yeah, if, because right now, Frisco, right now, my manager's Luke, and I know, I know he's stealing from me, but I, I don't say Frisco, nothing. Frisco, I, I, I pay him in hamburgers. <laughs> I pay him in hamburgers. I say, I know, hey, meet me, me, me at I Mickey know, D's. Hey, yo, I, I got you on a Big Mac. You tell me the hamburgers are organic. I know they're not organic. You know, I just feel like I'm taking advantage of and I'm I don't like... want that. So please tell me how you do it because this is, this, and now I, I made a joke out of it, but this is very important for other people coming. For other people. Just in general, yeah. yeah. And, it's and, good and advice. So, so I'm continuing. So, yeah, so, most definitely. Um, I think that because of my, my hustling at a young age and me being able and me coming from an era where there was no social media and I need and, and I needed to go out there and I needed to promote myself. I needed to, you know, to to show what God gave me. Again, when I did this, I did it because I loved it. Something triggered inside of me at five years old when I saw that movie. It wasn't about being famous and having money. It was about, oh my God, this is a way that we can express ourselves. It was an expression for me. So I'm in the game because I love the craft, not for the fame. If the okay. fame comes, I'm gonna grab it. Yes, but that's not my purpose. You know, I'm not. I'm not a man. Uh, we all need money, but I'm not a man who's greedy for money. I'm not out there. You know, I, I, right now I'm not starving, and so because I'm not starving, I'm not gonna wanna. I'm not. I'm not. No, 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 no. You know, the love of money is the root to all evil. I don't love money. I just use it because I need it in, the, in, all, in this world as, as normal. If I get up, if God blesses me with a, an abundance of money, then I'll do it and I'll invest and I'll help the needy because I'm just about helping, bro. It's not even about that, bro. I get, I get like three thousand dollars and I want to go shopping for everybody but myself. You know what I'm saying? That's just who I am. Mm. So, um. Yeah, so I think that because I hustled so long, it just stood with me. You understand? So when people, I mean, now mind you, I've had people come up to me and want to represent me. Absolutely. Of course. Of people course. have said, listen, do you have a manager? No, here's my card. Here's this. You know, I can do great things for you or whatever. I've tried a couple of things with people, but never signed anything because the way I work is that. If you want to represent me, you we have to do something on a trial basis before I put my handcuff on something. 110%. So if in 30 days you can get me at least six gigs, then you got me. Yeah, it's worth it. Because you're, you're, you're getting me work. That means I'm working twice a week for the month. Exactly. You understand? So if you could get me six gigs in 30 days, at the end of the 30 days, I'll be in your office and I'll sign your picture. I mean, your, your contract. Your contract. Right? That's hard. That's not easy. It's hard. Yeah, but that, but that's how he knows how, how Frisco, much you're putting into this. But yeah. Frisco, by himself, hands down, is getting himself four to five gigs a month. Wow, that's a lot of work, brother. So that's a lot of work. I work. I work that's a, a lot. lot of work. That's a lot you of know, work. God has blessed me. This is what I'm saying, that God continues to bless me. You know, sometimes... There's a month that I'm not working. Two months. But at least he's blessed me with enough to work at a certain time that I can sit back and just... <sighs> before he puts me back out there again. You're not suffocating. He doesn't, right. you know, he doesn't... Right. Yeah, yeah. And, no, why, so be, I understand, and I, I'm not being afrentado. You know what I'm no saying? Because greed... That's see, people the, say that's money is the root of all evil. I, 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 I have a problem with that phrase. I think greed... I think it's us. Our greediness is what creates the, e the what what makes the money evil. You understand? So now I understand when you say you get me six gigs a month. Okay, I'll sign because you on your own again four or five. So, and you can't tell me that the work is not out there, and exactly. you and you have 
first and foremost, you have more connections than I do. Or you're supposed to. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So you got to show me that you can do something a little bit better than I can do for myself for me to sign for you. Yeah, because be if you're going to take money out of my check, it bet you better be getting me my work. I don't want to sign to you. I get my own work and you still get paid because I'm, I'm, I'm you know, that doesn't you work are, for me. You're the one that's hustling. That's, 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 that's fucking amazing, man. But Frisco, you know what it comes down to what you're saying? And that's a gem that you just dropped. Yes, it's yes. called, it's called investing in yourself. <laughs> You're banking in yourself versus going to somebody else. Now, the problem is that when you go with somebody else, they have 50, 60, maybe 100 people they got to find work for. So what they do is they shuffle it around so everybody gets a little taste, but that's not enough to keep a guy afloat. Exactly. Where your, your strategy is like, yo, I'm investing in myself. I'm going to get my five gigs and I'll be all right. And if I hit a rough patch, I'll, you know, I'll budget myself where I could go through a rough time and then find more work down the line. Absolutely. That, that's really... I. Listen, I'm surprised to hear that. I didn't think that it was possible to do that long, um, to you know, for a long career. But it seems like it's working for you, and yeah. that's nice, man. And it's the thing hustle, is, it's and the, the thing mentality. is, though, I'm sorry. It's the hustle mentality, like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Age. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you know, you're putting your, you're putting, you're putting your, 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 your life's work in the hands of somebody else. Now you sit back and you wait. And what if that person's not hustling like you're hustling? Right. That's why what he said about you get me six guns, six six gigs a month, I'll sign. Cause he's getting five. <laughs> that's the perfect. That's the perfect. Uh, yeah. And then and then also an, another thing that I do is that once I get those gigs and I'm on set, I start talking to the most important people on the set. Yes. Which is the AD and the director. So you develop relationships there. You develop a relationship and you develop that rapport with them. And the moment they need that Hispanic man, the first person they're going to call is Frisco. And Frisco Perfect. doesn't have to audition. And if he does, he doesn't have to come into a... Uh, he only comes back to a callback when he didn't even come to the first audition. You nice. understand? It's Very that type of thing. So there are ways to get around and get your work. You don't... I mean, the only thing that a, an agent really does for you is that sometimes they'll get you the part without you having to audition. You understand? Because they have a better um, relationship with the AD or the casting director of the next movie or what have you. If I could get myself the gigs by submitting myself, sending my reel, and I get called without having a manager, then Frisco, that means that you're the fucking man right now. No, no, I, believe, I believe in myself that much. Let me tell you, I don't think that every time I, I, I'm going to submit something... I'm sorry, Lou, I didn't mean to cut no, you No, 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 go, no, go ahead, brother. Go, go. Um, I'm not saying that every time I submit something, I'm expecting to get it because I'm that good. I'm not. First of all, I'm not arrogant. I'm a son of God. I'm blessed. Absolutely. But I feel that my work is good enough to get me the gigs that I get. And when I submit myself, I'm not only... I'm submitting myself with the knowledge knowing that there's probably 10,000 other guys who probably have the same look or who are Hispanic with short hair submitting for the same role. Now, if I get called for it... Gotcha. Got it. Behind... Karina always told me, and she had... Behind every no, there's a yes. Mm hmm Yeah. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Now, now, Frisco, my my, th you know, as an outsider, the thing that I'm thinking about when you're when you're representing yourself, though, are there some shortcomings, like in terms of maybe um, some dollars being missed because they see you don't have the representation? No, Do they try I mean, to lowball yeah. you, or is there yeah. standard fees for standard? Yeah, well, there's, you know, being being a veteran and having being in the union that I am, there's. You know, there's a certain salary you have to pay dancers, choreographers, actors. You know what I'm saying? Like so a base. There's a certain, there's a certain yeah, there's uh, a baseline. Base so it, and from there, honest. depending how, how good or, or how Well, no. Like, for instance, if I'm going to be hired as a dancer on a movie, then there's a dancer's salary. Okay. If you're on screen for more than nine seconds, you have to get paid a certain amount. And it keeps getting up and up. Oh, so if I'm in a if I'm in a movie in a whole movie and I'm dancing for 15 minutes, that's gonna be cha-ching. 
Wow. Wow. Yeah, no, no. Now, 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 now it makes a lot of sense. So you basically have a template and you know when you go in, all right, this is what I'm supposed to be getting. Because what, what I was thinking right away is like, are guys taking advantage of that situation knowing that you don't have the representation? But it seems like you're well versed, so they can't hit you over the head and be like, yo, brother, I know, I know what I'm supposed to get. Well, I know right. what I'm entitled to. He just said I'm he's my, in the union own too. I'm so the, the union, you know, protects them to a certain point. But at the right. end of the day, he has to know, like he does, <laughs> what he's getting into. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And on top of that, if you now, if you want to use me, and also if you have me in a musical where I'm singing and dancing, now you have to give me another fee because wow. now I'm using my voice. Okay. Nice. So now I'm getting a dancer's fee and I'm getting a singer's salary. So Very now nice. they go and, the money. And the same rule applies after nine seconds or ten seconds or whatever, yeah. whatever. Same it depends the scale. Yeah. It it's depends scale. how long they use you on screen. But if you, you're dancing, not to and be singing, on set, to be literally on screen. But if you're dancing and singing, it's it's it, it's double. Okay, it's double. I got you. So I Different guess rates, but. You know, yeah, you but, it, but, it's, but it's double. You're getting paid for each. Yeah. Yeah, you know, dancing and singing. So I guess we kind of we kind of jumped the gun, but so what was your break into acting? How do you get into? Or you know what, Cisco? I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. Did you start singing? Well, you did start singing. You spoke about that. So what was your break into acting? Okay, so the the way I started. Um. So when. I was asked if I was singing and stuff. Um, if I if I sang, I said yes. Yeah. So I tried to do the whole singing thing. Now, when I went to high school, I went to high school of performing arts, as I said before. And my best fr one of my best friends, her name is Andrea Martin. Now, Andrea Martin wrote like Grammy hits for Tony Braxton, for SWV, for Monica. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So, twenty five years later, passed, and I'm looking for my friend Andrea, and I'm like, oh my god, you know, I want to. I want to now, um, I want to sing and I want to do a track now that I'm older. I want to do whatever. So finally got in touch with her um, and we did this. I said, I need an Andrew Martin song. Your songs are crazy. They hits, you know, so what's up? She was like, yeah. So we got the song named Palmer. I got into acting through the dancing and singing because um, a friend of mine sent me an email and said, listen, there's um, they're shooting a movie called Fighting in the Bronx. It's with Terrence Howard and, you know, um, Channing Tatum. And it's pretty cool. It's a gang movie. You know, you'd be a little, like, sidekick gangster, you know, and the whatever. So I said, okay, you know, all right, let's do it. You know, I never, I've never, i never been on a set of a movie before, so I'm here. I am excited. So I go down. It was nothing major. It was like a little extra part, but I was part of the crew of the main guy. So, you know, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool, man. So I got that bug. I was like, I think I could do this. It was long hours. It was like 14, 15 hours on set. But we didn't, you know, there's so much going on that the time goes by. You don't even realize that 14 hours went by. So I was like, oh, I could do this. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to try this. But let's see if I get somebody else calls me and says, yo, you want to do something? So then I contacted the guy back and I said, is there anything else that you know of? And he goes, no, nah, but I'll let you know. I said, okay, so I started doing some research online. And I said, I started doing casting, you know, casting agents, casting websites, casting, you know, how does, you know, how can an actor without representation find roles? Like I went, I went berserk. Like I start making up stuff and we have Google now. So now I'm here, I am, you know, doing all this stuff. Who's the best? Yeah, so I'm <laughs> typing on them. So I get, so I finally found something that was taking, you know, that I went into and I saw that, they were submitting for a lot of, um, they were looking for actors for a lot of gigs, for TV shows and all of this. And I said, what? So I went into the site and I was like, and I read it and I said, oh, let me sign up and see what happens. So I took, now I do photos too. So I took, um, I have a camera. I set, set it up, positioned it, and I started taking my portfolio. Pa, 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 pa. Uploaded them to the site. I'm going to tell you, within 30 minutes of me uploading it, I started getting these flood of emails. Pa, 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 pa. Law and Order, Blue Bloods, and the list started, bro. And I was like, what? And so I started submitting. 
because it was like, you know, it was like a general email that would go to like the Hispanic guys looking for a Hispanic guy between 23 and 40, um, you know, to do, you know, to be the featured as a dead body, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, this shit is pretty cool. So let me submit it. So I would submit it and I would get a lot of calls. I would get on set and I would see it. And at first I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. Like I'm on the set of Law and Order. I see the shit on TV. What's wow. the, you know, this is crazy. So I started off doing a lot of extra work. And um, then I then I said, you know what? There's two, I don't like being in this fishbowl. You know what I'm saying? I don't like, it's almost like a hamster wheel for me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not, I'm tired of going and doing background and just, you know, I'm not, I don't want to be one of 50 Hispanics. So Frisco, what are you going to do about that? How are you going to stand out? You know, how are you going to make sure that your face is always on camera? So I started not submitting for stuff like that, like movies. Like the last thing I think that I submitted for was to be a dead person who got crushed by the car in Spider-Man. Oh, wow. When they filmed it here in New York. I think it was Spider-Man 3 or 2 or some shit like that with, um, with this. So, so, with anyway. Anyway. so that was the last one I did a big like that because you got, you got like 500 extras and then you got... 400 like other people and it's like by the time you get home it's the next day wow so i said i'm not doing this no more so then i started seeing looking for one uh looking for three hispanics looking for two hispanics looking for one hispanic to be the best friend of the lead principal and i started finding those so i said that's where i want to be that's but where those i want to get my friends. those are those are also more difficult to 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 get right without an agent Got you. Got See? you. So here I go. I start challenging myself. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I don't know how, but I'm going to do it. Now, when I was a kid and I decided I wanted to do uh, to be an actor, I, I always wanted to be the bad guys because the bad guys have the best time on set. They they just bad and they always come back, you know, so I was, <laughs> give me the bad guy role. Give me the bad guy role, hands down. So um, I submitted for person of interest they were actually i i submitted for person of interest for another role all of a sudden now i wasn't in the union then remember i was everything i've been doing has been by god's grace on your own on my own with no union no nothing right so i did person of interest and i ended up being the leads right hand man who ends up killing somebody in an alley. Bro, when I showed up on set and I had the people applying makeup and following me and taking me to the trailer, I was just like, what? Wow. <laughs> this beats <laughs> being a dead guy, right? <laughs> it was like this feeling inside of me, like, am I really here? Like, I felt like I was literally floating, man. It was, it was a feeling I can't explain because now I'm being treated like a celebrity, you know, exactly. or someone. I'm being, you know... So I was there. They were like, oh, my God, first go, you're great. I got to meet the Jim Caviezel. I was, like, talking like this, having lunch. And, I mean, these are people that I see, bro. So, you know, inside of me, I'm really like, oh, my God. So that's how it started, man. It started through just extra work. And then I just started doing that stuff. So the way I got that person of interest was because I submitted for one role. But then the, that role that I finally got where I ended up, you know, being the right-hand man of the guy, he – um they were actually looking for someone they they did what they call it um i think it's like a, a cattle call so what they do is that now usually people that get those roles are in the union okay. so if you're not in your union you're not really going to be in front of the camera you're going to literally be the background the pixels the people walking up and down you know where you don't really notice them where they're blurry mm -hmm. those are the um the non union actors you have some union but most of them are non-union so i was like um so the way i got that that lead that that part was because they did a cattle call now they didn't have anybody with the description that was in the union mm. and they needed somebody like that so what they did was that they opened it to the non-union people too mm. to submit and when i submitted they called me right away Wow. So that's how I got my first premiere of um 
But yeah, now you're in the union, person, right? Person of interest. So now I'm person. in. Huh? Now in, you're in the union now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been in the union for Actors, a while dancing, now. Singing, yeah, everything. all of that. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. So, first of I'm sorry. First of I'm sorry. Like. First of all, I'm sorry. How long? How long did that that um that um that gig last? Person what? of interest. Were you on there for a, a, a short time? I was. Yeah, I, it was a day player. I was a oh, day okay. player. That's what they call them, the day players, which so means like that you episode? come in, you get killed, or you go, get arrested, and you're out the door. Okay. Got you. Got you. Know, got you. So but it was still, a day player. But still, huh? you got you got you. You got the camera time you need. Oh my God, yeah. So I, uh, day players are great because you get paid. You, you're there. I was there for seven days for just that one episode because it takes seven days to film one episode. That's crazy. That yeah. is crazy. So I got paid for seven days. I was on set for seven days, but it was just for that episode. Um. So, you know, I started then from there. It just, I said, this is how I'm gonna go. This is how I'm gonna go, and I just started submitting to a lot of the stuff, and then. I got the ID channel and I started playing the villains there. And I and I I, I was on a lot of um, the ID channel movies, uh, shows, the reenactments, and I yeah. played the killer in most of them. Now, now let me so ask. You, you want to be the bad guy, and now you're the bad guy. Yeah. No, no, but, <laughs> no, but let's stay there for a minute, though. Because ID, I think, I want to say like maybe more than half percent, fifty percent of the world watches those shows, and when they see them, those reenactments, a lot of times people don't know that you're an actor. Right, reacting I got stories scene. for you. I'm saying, have you? Did you ever get stopped? Because I can imagine oh, somebody's at the grocery store. Holy shit, that's the killer. That's the yeah, killer. Absolutely. That, that, happened, to that, happened, to me <laughs> that <laughs> happened to me a few times. Absolutely. Really? Yeah, tell yeah, us, yeah. Tell this us, lady share, was share. like, "Aren't you the rapist? Aren't you the killer who killed?" I was like, "What?" And she, I was like, "No, you know, that's Mr. Roll." And she was like, "Oh my God, are you sure? Because I don't know, you know." So it took a minute for her to be, like, and then she was still kind of like. I don't believe I'm gonna call the cops in to be sure. <laughs> Just I'm gonna call the cops. Yo, oh, that man. is crazy. Because when yeah. I saw that, when I saw that on your, um, what's that? IMB, whatever. IMBDA, whatever. I am, I was, IMDb. There you go. IMDb. I saw that. I said ID. I said, oh, that got to be tough doing those roles because people they're gonna look at you. Oh, yo, that's the guy. That's the guy. Mm -hmm. He lives on the fourth floor. But um, so how do you get on Fifty Cent's uh, um, his hit TV show? What's that called? For the life, for life. For for life. life. Yeah. Based on okay, well, events. before I even got on his, I was on this um, HBO miniseries called um, The Night Of with Riz Ahmed. And I, and I saw I that. That's a good show. That's a good I've show. been wanting for that to come back, man. That's yeah. Leguizamo, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that's an awesome fucking show. Yeah, that's with John Turturro. Turturro. Yeah, Turturro. John Turturro, Turturro. Yeah. yeah. Great actor. Yeah, so um, I was on that, and I actually played one of the, the one of the main gang uh, Latin um, Latin uh, the Bloods in in Rikers Island. You oh, know, really? like one of the main Latin kings. That's where there we go, Latin kings, mm -hmm. not Latin the Blood, Latin kings. I was one of the Latin one of the main Latin kings in the prison. So when Riz got arrested and he got into the jail, and they kind of and the guy was taking him around to kind of show him the ropes and shit. When they got to the uh, to the yard. There I am playing the game of cards. And so the guy's telling Riz Ahmed, you see those guys with the cards? Those are the guys you got to be careful with. And you see me look at him like, and then just look back at the cards. So I'm one of those sinister type of characters, which is great, man. I love them. I love them. So from there, um, I met a lot of people. I met assistant directors, directors, and all of them. And some of the PAs work on every show. You know, once one season finishes, they go to a next, you know, they try, they cool. like actors. They try to get their gigs, the you gigs, know. Yeah. So I, I became friends with one of them. And then they were like, listen, submit. So one of the casting agents, agencies that actually calls me a lot without the agent, um, they called me and they said, Frisco, um, I know you don't like to do these big um, jail 50 guys. I get it. I, I understand. Just listen to what I'm saying. Right. And I'm like, okay. They're like, listen, they need a lot. They need a lot, you know, who can play like a lead or, you know, someone in jail. And I know you're pretty good at that. <laughs> yeah. I, said, yeah. I said, yeah, but, and they were like, yeah, but um, let's just try it. I think this is going to be good for you. 
And I was like, all right, I'll try it for the first time. And this is for the, the night of. So then I got onto the set. The moment the director saw me, before the first day was finished taping, he had already contacted the, the agency and told the agency he needs to be a regular on the show. I want him here for the rest of the season. Oh, and I was yeah. the first actor to be hired as the Latin King to work the entire season. Wow. Wait, wait a minute, Frisco. What agency? What agency? Yeah, no, well, because like they didn't contact you directly or because they like contacted said, me directly. They the did. The agency contacted me directly. Okay. But you're said, not represented by the agency. No, I'm not. Okay, okay, okay. But oh. they called me and said the director gave us a call because they submitted me for the work. Oh the okay. agency. On the be because I don't have an agent, like a personal agent, uh -huh. this agency can can submit to directors for you as well. Okay. Do they get a so, cut of whatever? Uh, no, they don't get a cut. Oh wow! It's part of that website that I found. Oh. Um, that you just pay on a monthly, you're like thirty dollars oh, for the month. Okay, 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 okay. And so if you submit through there, they'll just shoot that to the directly yeah. to the director. Because you subscribe to them on on a correct. On a, uh, Okay, but it, it also helped though the director liked them and he wanted to see no, 100%, him. Oh, yeah, 100%. right. And first so of all, right. I gotta tell you, you got a unique look too, though. Even <laughs> though you, even though I look at you, you're Latino, but you have a look that kind of like stands out. He's like, yeah. this is a unique face, like it's not a common face, just right. like me, yeah. just like me, Frisco. <laughs> no, to FL, to FL is going to so go ahead. <laughs> So go ahead. Uh, no, so that was it. So he turned around and, and so he contacted the, the director himself, um, contacted the agency and said, listen, I know you don't represent him, but I want him here for the rest of the season. That is the look we're looking for. And I became prominent in the show the night of. And I was one of the main, you know, Latinos in the prison, nice. you know, one of the head Latinos. Um, and so from there. You know everybody, and then I then I did John Wash. I did um on the case with John Wash, and I played a killer there. You know, and so then I see the same agency that got me the night of called me and said, "Guess what?" And I was like, "What's up?" They were like, "Fifty Cent has a show. Would you like to play one of the main inmates?" I said, "What? Of course, <laughs> of course. What are you talking about?" <laughs> they were like. But remember, you know, you said I said it's okay. So went in, did the pilot, and it turns out that I was the only one besides the main, the the guy Nicholas, um, Pinnock, and the gentleman who the pilot was about. It was just us three on the bus going to jail. So that was the greatest thing because Gosh. I was in, in the pilot. I was with him in the bus. And I became one of the main, you know, like Lat Latinos that they saw in the in the thing, you know. So there was a lot of uh, interaction between me and Nick, you know, Nicholas, and just you know, Frankie G, you know, from Saw. He's like one of my closest, dearest. Like that's like my mentor, bro. That's like the first Latino, you know, Johnny Zero. Um, he uh, he's one of the first Latinos that I can, if I say only Latino that I met, that's an actor that I actually look up to and try to follow his motto because his motto is just keep going forward and go go just go nice. just go from me just go don't nice. give up go 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 and he tells me he says he gives me like certain things then nicholas from um from for life too he you know he tells me yo you have a great spirit you're just gonna go you're ready for the next level so here I am today, I'm recording, I'm singing, I'm dancing, I'm acting. So, you know, life couldn't be better right now. Nice. So All by yourself. All by myself. With the help of... Yep, of course. Almighty. <laughs> Almighty. Of which, which Without brings that, us, I can't do anything. Which brings us to uh, the hot movie that's in the theaters right now, In the Heights. Yeah, yeah. And um, before... Well, we even talk about this. It was it, Chris, just so you know. So me and Frisco are talking, and I could tell that Frisco got like not a little agitated, but was like, "Yo, dude, I th I did more work than in the Heights," and I and and I was trying to convey to him. I said, "Brother, it's just that I think for Latinos right now, it's just an important movie movement, 
and you're part of something legendary. So that's for me, that's what kind of stood out. And, and and it's not to minimize, you know, because I know listen, just so you just so you understand that I know there there are over 200 and something cast members for that movie in the heights. Chris, I just saw it the other day. It's amazing. Really? The scenes. One cast member doesn't stay in one particular scene for more than five seconds. It is moving fast. You got people dancing in the background. You got people flying in and out. It is just the way it was done. It was done. Chris, it's freaking amazing. Just think of a Broadway show put in front of a camera and it's just moving in the and street. entertainment. Yeah, in the it, it, it's in the streets. Amazing. So when I spoke, so it so was when one I spoke, of the best things I've ever worked on. Absolutely. So when I spoke to Frisco, I could tell he was a little agitated because that's what I kind of led with, and he has a body of work. But to Frisco's defense, I I did more research, and it had more than two hundred and something cast members. Only 167 cast members were credited for the movie. So that means whatever 100 or something did not receive credit for being in that movie because it was just so many damn people. Non-union motherfuckers. No, no, it's not even about non union <laughs> It's not even about non-union, Chris. It was it's just it? too many freaking no, people. No, no, they, no, they, they're pretty, yo, he, he, had a, he went to the Heights and he actually employed a lot of people that live in that that same community. Which is, which they they which were is extras, great. yeah, they That's were extras. Great. But it was just a lot of people, and so well, first it was of all, a that, massive thing. So these are this is the reason why I was telling you that I don't like to do these big things when they ask me to do it. Now this was a really special project. You understand it, and it has special meaning to me. Whether I ended up on the cutting room floor, whether I'm in front of the camera, whether the, when they came through the crowd and they took all the close-ups, and it, what happens once it gets to the director's room and and uh, you know they want to edit and do whatever, that's that's fine. The experience was absolutely amazing. It was being on set with Anthony, with Jimmy Smith, with all of them talking to them, laughing, and just becoming just like a family and working for two weeks straight, just dancing, dancing. What it, what's my passion? I never got tired. And we were there for more than 16 hours a day. Wow, wow. Pero eso bailando, 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 like hitting it. We'd rest for like a good hour, two hours. You know, of course they jumped to other scenes to give us rest. Pero eso fue fuerte. That was yeah. just like bah, bah, no, no, bah, bah, bah. yo, first of all, it was amazing. It's the amount of people they had, everybody was on point, boom, and the boom, dancers and were amazing, freaking amazing. Let me tell you, you should. I, I, I should have sent you the picture so you can see. I don't know, I, it's in my one of my phone, my phone that I had at that time. I took a picture with all the dancers, we were all like in a dance pose. And nice. it was just like really, like it was far back, and it was just like a trillion of us. It was just the most, it was the most amazing thing that I could. You could, hey, you could still there. send it because that would be a great, a great. While we're talking about this, Lou workers magic. And if you can yeah, still no, send it to Lou, still send the picture. No, that's absolutely. Send it. Describe Let it, me look for that shit. Yeah, and I'll send amazing, it to you. Amazing, amazing. Absolutely. It so, was just, it was just great, bro. So, uh, Frisco, I got to ask you, Jimmy Smith, uh, any funny stories, anything you could share uh, with your time with him or any other cast members? Do you get to run into Mark Anthony? Anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I knew Mark Anthony from back, from the freestyle days. So I can imagine. Back yeah. again, was he was like, oh, my God, Frisco, como esta? how you been? And yeah. So it's been cool. Jimmy, you know, everybody's in their own little element. We all just had laughed. And um, actually, you saw the movie. So um, a lot of the times we spoke um on set jimmy mark daphne and myself was about um mark anthony's uh scene you saw oh, it right? when he's drinking the beers and yeah, like, yeah, he's he's drinking, yeah. Crazy don't, and don't ruin it does that's he die one of the most for me. no he doesn't die he doesn't does die. no he doesn't die that's one of the most um um you know people have every it, time he did it it was just like we were just in awe mark is Mark it's tragic. It's incredible. It's incredible. a tragic incredible. scene because I I feel a, a lot of Latinos could relate with that. It was Absolutely. so. And when he told them, he goes, "Listen, that's why he gets paid in cash." You know, it was like it, it, I, I don't want to ruin it for the fault. Well, it's my, a my, great my movie. Girl, my girl wants to see it. My actually, no, she but it is yesterday. Amazing. She's dying to see, you gotta it. see it. 
It's an excellent movie. Well done. I never seen that many Latinos represented like that in a movie ever before. God bless. And, and, and it's what? just and it's a and the way they were represented, it was beautiful because he did such a good job of bringing in a lot of different cultures. He he represent he had this one dance scene where they're like kind of in an alleyway and you, you just see uh the buildings the buildings, you see flags from all the different countries, Colombia, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Mexico, and so on and so on. And everybody's just, and it, it, the movie's about dreamers and, you know, why people come over here and, you know, they, they work hard to try to make a better life for themselves. But then, you know, the roadblocks they deal with. And he just did an excellent job of capturing that. It's definitely really? going to touch, There's a gonna touch uh, Latinos for sure. And, and a lot of... I think anybody can relate with it. Yeah. Anybody who's a minority is going to touch, man. You know, yeah. so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching it. I'm yeah, it's excited. great. I haven't even seen it yet, though, to be honest with you. I haven't seen it yet. So tonight after... Um, tonight, I'm going to get some popcorn. I'm going to go downstairs, probably get a, you know, get Coronas and... First of all, movie night. First of all, I don't want to ruin it for you, but so a guy comes with an Uzi and kills like 30, 30 of the everybody, dancers. Chris Cole, no, no. He's lying. No, He's no, lying. No. Yo, but do you want to you you want me to tell you like a little behind the scene what happened, no. bro, while we were filming down in the Heights? Go ahead, brother. We're here for that. While we were there, real quick, while we were there, um there were some gangs in the neighborhood who actually okay. were not impressed with production being there. Oh, wow. So they actually lit a car on fire while we were while we were filming. Are you serious? So they had to shut down production. Yeah. Where where, where, where did the filming take place? Like on or on Dyke? Oh, okay. Yeah, over over on that side. And yeah. so that you know that corner um where the piragua was and all of that. Yes. Where the kids are outside and the piragua, the ice cream truck yes. and all that. Um, that actually had those four corners after the car was lit on fire those four corners had to be um recreated inside of a warehouse are you serious to wow. finish the to finish production wow that's you know that's a shame though that's that, sad. that is sad that they that's don't sad. see what's going on it was something beautiful man it's representing yeah, a lot of good things and and this is what keeps us down you know i i always say you know um and i i, I don't want to go to I don't want to go all political and shit, but I always say that the reason why the Latinos don't prosper as we 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 have all types of we 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 are we are blessed in so many stages, but because we don't back each other up, that's why we don't prosper as a as a community, you know. And I'm not you know you, you see these chinos these chinos you I live in Brooklyn. And this 8th Avenue is, is, is Chinatown. And there's a coffee shop every single block of from, from here, 20 blocks down. And how they all stay afloat? Because they all support each other. That's the problem with us Latinos. Yep. We don't we don't we don't have that. It's very few. Like if and when we here, find it, and when we find it, it's like crazy glue. We don't want to let go. We can't because it's it's it's, it's you we, we hardly bump into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, you know, yeah. and, 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 and that's and that's a, you know they're doing a they're doing a film. They're highlighting your neighborhood, bro. They're highlighting. They're bringing your neighborhood to 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 the big screen, and it's and not no es Pepe y Juana. It's okay, you know, they, it, it, okay, you know, you know how the you know how the, some and and to be honest with you, I mean, sometimes you know how people are. Some people are just never satisfied, bro. You know, you, you, and, you get mad because they don't talk enough about it, but when they do talk about it, you get mad as well. So what do we? I mean, come on, we're trying to. Yeah, yeah we're trying to. I, I get it. I mean, it's not even being political; it's being factual. That's what I, yeah. it is. I mean, those are the I, facts. I'm pretty sure a big part of that too was that those kids couldn't they couldn't eat like they normally, you know, because their their hustles being interrupted. But um, Frisco, before before we sign off, brother, uh, sure. tell the listeners where they could find you, what project you're working on, where to look. And before I let you go, Frisco, I, I don't know if you ever thought about this avenue. Being that you're so versed now in like finding gigs and working the system, have you thought about being a, a, an agent yourself? That's something you should really consider, brother, because you know it seems like you have the game you're plan. Doing, you're doing the, the work. Yeah, the funny, you, you know, the, your question, Lou, is just, is just incredible because <laughs> I look, look, look how crazy. 
I was looking through something, and this is just a little story from really quick. I was looking through something, and I saw that they needed dancers for the um, what is it, New Jersey Nets? Oh yes, 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 Brooklyn Nets. Bro Bro Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, yeah, the, the dancers. Nets. Okay, I'm sorry. No, Brooklyn no, no, Nets. no, it's all right. It's all right. The Kicks are out of the playoffs, so the hell with the Nets. Originally, they are the New Jersey Nets. So, so. Oh, originally they were Jersey. Yeah, yeah they were Jersey. Yeah, they were Jersey. Jersey. I was. Right, yeah, you, right. you, you're right. You're right. You're right. All right. So, I saw something that they needed dancers, female dancers for this, and I'm like, and in my head, and that's all I know is female dancers. Yo, and in my head, I was at, I went through the Rolodex real quick. Which girl do I know that I could tell to go down? Because, you know, she's, like, pretty dope. You know, which girl, which girl? And then I started reading, and I saw what they wanted. And I was like, and I went through the roller desk. Really, I called my friend. Yo, so they're having auditions tomorrow, and I, I think you would be perfect for this. Why don't you go down to um, Madison Square Garden? They're auditioning for female dancers for the New Jersey Nets. Okay? Let me know how it works out, bro, because, you know, I'm, I'm looking out for you. All right, <laughs> call you later. Boom. She goes, look, calls me back. I fucking got it. Nice. She, she, Yo, made, brother. She, she became one of the New Jersey Nets. So she was like, why don't you be my agent? I was like, nigga, I don't even know. I don't know nothing about agent. I just saw Listen. something. I, you came into my mind and I sent you out. But that's Frisco, Frisco how, how you figured out how to get gigs? You could figure out how to be an agent. Because you already know what to do. You know what people no, I smooth, then, uh, I smooth like, with. How do I get to an agent? And knowing, and knowing you, Frisco, and, and just just just... The, the, this conversation that we're having, you seem like 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 a real down to earth, humble dude that would do the right thing. Always. So 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 you know, um, you you getting into the agent field um, will probably open a lot of doors for a lot of people, and I, and I know you're not gonna eye gouge them. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? You know, I'll, you, I'll be the type of agent that people. I'll be the type of agent that people won't believe. They'll be like, because I'll do it every time I get somebody a job. I won't want fucking one. Per, I, I I won't want one dollar from it. <laughs> no, reason, no, I mean, I, of course, I have to get paid. But yeah, I'm, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I'm the type of person that that's how much I love helping people. That if I send you to something and you make it, even if you offer me twenty dollars, yo, here's twenty dollars from the first hundred dollars that I made. Nah, my nigga, take it because I know. Guys, that I know how what it is to struggle, as everybody, a lot of people do. I know what it is to to do the legwork by yourself and hitting concrete walls. Yeah. You understand? And to be able to just say you can do this. Now, if I if I get you three gigs and you land all leads, motherfucker, I want half your check. Frisco, <laughs> Frisco, what Chris was was what Chris was trying to get around to saying was. Listen, we want you to be our agent. That's why <laughs> you could we could be your guinea Luke, pigs. No, Listen, Frisco, no, this you, this this is what we were leading to. You don't get too fast. You have to let me butter them up a little bit more, man. I had them. Well, Bubba, we're an hour and a half in. We gotta drop it at a certain point. <laughs> you had me there, bro. You have to let me butter them up a little bit more, man. I was like, Chris. I was getting them down. See how you did one percent? That's all. <laughs> but Chris, if we're only making if we're only making twenty five dollars, that that one percent is a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Well, I don't think we're that's that, fucking we great, bro. <laughs> No, but uh, Frisco, seriously, thank you. It was a no, true delight you. to have you on to to hear your story. I know our listeners are definitely going to appreciate it. And where can people find you? What projects should people be looking for? And before you you say all that, just let you know that you you have a home with us. Whenever yes. you want to promote something, brother, you got my IG. Send me a message, and I'll make sure to to plug oh it my in. God, God bless you, bro. God bless you, guys. I'm a good person to talk to, Frisco. You, you, we, you know, you, you don't have to worry about him. Like, You're a good person to convince me to be an agent. I guess. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, man, do it, man. Do <laughs> it. Do it. So where can the people find you, Frisco? Go ahead. So, yo, you can find me on Instagram under the true Frisco. Um, you can find me on uh, Facebook, Frisco Cosme. Cosme. Thank you. And I Cosme. appreciate that, Chris, because everybody says Cosme, and I only Americanize it for the... For these idiots, but, say but, it for the idiots. I, I Americanize it, but it's Cosme. It's Frisco it's Cosme. Cosme. You got the it. Best. You're the best. So Frisco Cosme over at uh Facebook and uh Twitter is uh first at Frisco the number four and the letter U. Frisco for you. And I have a single called Palm Reader that should be coming out pretty soon. 
I'm actually going to put up a lyric video first before the official video. So nice. it's going to be pretty dope, written by and produced by Andrea Martin. And um, now I'm going back into the studio to record on the second track. Who knows? Maybe I'll put an EP together. Hey, first of if you ever need an uncoordinated fat guy to do some dance moves, <laughs> you contact Lou, he's gonna contact me. <laughs> yo, yo, <laughs> Frisco, just think of Tommy Boy when he's doing the with the Chippendale dance, no thing. shirt on. I, I saw it, I can see it, I see it, I can see it clearly. No, but listen, Frisco, <laughs> uh, again, I just want to let you know, uh, for this episode, the uh, our intro is going to be your song. Palm Rita, we're gonna play with the, with our backdrop just so the folks can hear it, and I'll make sure to put your information there so people. Wait, know you already got that? Come on, listen. This is what happens when you do an interview twice. <laughs> Boom! Toma. <laughs> Oye, manito, it was a pleasure, man. Take care, man. Dios te bendiga los dos. Amen. Peace, Peace out, bro. Peace. Thanks. Appreciate you. Later. Take care, brother. Hold on, this, this is good. Don't cut none of this off. Yo, nigga, don't tell me how to edit my job. No, no, no. I, that, I, that, I, that, that, that's all I do. That's all I, I do. That I have to, you know, I took over Chris. the interview. I took over the interview. I had to. I, no, no, you forced your way in and you kept on repeating a lot of the shit they were saying. Hey, you weren't paying attention to the story he was telling. He told you that Matt got thrown out the room, but you come back and say, no. Frisco, did she take you outside? I'm like, is he not listening to the fucking story? You're, you're so busy thinking about when you're going to jump in. <laughs> no, exactly.